Cheers everyone, Novaberg back again. Mm. When I'm finished slurping me, oh that got me right at the back of the throat. Whew. Oh, coffee burn, coffee burn. <coughs> Excuse me, what a great way to start a video. Thank you. Um, what have I got to waffle about today? Um, this is kind of, uh, inspired, well it's not inspired, it's kind of a reply actually, a video response if you will, uh, to Alloy 7. Uh, BC and his um, question uh, on his he's doing a series called uh, Game of Life and this is I think it was, he's on to his 8th episode so it's been really good uh, entertaining to watch, good guy check him out, link in the description box and uh, he asked about um, a common question which has been doing the rounds lately uh, mostly due to the release of uh, the Order 1886 is it? on the PS4 and Xbox One and the length of it, and people have been complaining that uh, it's sh too short. Phoenix can finish it too quickly, it's over, in the blink of an eye, retrospectively. Um, and the question is, are games really that, you know, does it matter on the length of game? Do you, you know, are you getting value for money if you feel that the game is short, say mission mode, certainly a single player? Um, and, or are you looking for a really long game to, you know, last couple of weeks possibly even you know spread over time um, and BC puts across his argument which is very understandable and I kind of agree with him as well where he says it's not really um, does, it doesn't really matter how short the game is uh, well sort of if the, if the quality of the game is high so if the quality of the game is really really high and you get like say for instance six hours of utter sheer enjoyment out of every second then is it justified, say, the high full price tag? Um, and possibly it could be. If, if the quality of the game and the originality of the game is, yes, it, I, it probably would qualify. I would argue that many games aren't um, and they're released too quickly. And if they are short, without obviously any added content like DLC or anything, uh, and, the, and, the, and the game isn't, up to spec as it were, a high quality game certainly but parts of it are say slightly wrong and glitched and messed up then no you're being cheated I would I'd definitely argue that but I would also argue that when it comes to long games I think sometimes and I think I haven't heard anyone say this yet that sometimes a game can be too long because I have found that um, even with a high quality game um, that sometimes the length of the game it just cuts into your time too much and you haven't got the time to dedicate to it uh, or you want to switch to another game or but it's difficult when you're doing a story based game because you want to st uh, feel in the moment still you want to be f always familiar with the controls familiar where you were in the story and so on and so forth and especially if it's a very long drawn out game um, and we, we could be talking about like Metal Gear Solid in, uh, installments for instance, Final Fantasy certainly, some, lots of JRPGs and WRPGs um, and story based games like that it, maybe it goes on too long and I'm not saying the quality is low but maybe, maybe it just it seems to be a little bit monotonous and get tiresome so it's kind of a balance of whether you want I think it's subjective. It's an entirely subjective thing. I think it's entirely down to the individual what kind of experience they're looking for. If they feel cheated that they're paying 50 quid for a game which is only going to last six or seven hours, then fair point. They might have an argument there, but on the other hand, they might feel they've got value for money. It's, it's, a, it's I think it's a purely individual thing and an individual experience. Of course, when it when it comes to absolute crap games, then that's a different matter altogether. But when it comes to a quality game and it's short, I think it's entirely subjective. And when it comes to a long game, you certainly need to have uh, a high amount of capture in there and quality. Uh, when there's two, I mean, a, a good example with the the JRPGs and some of the older role playing games. And um, there's a lot of walking around training, which some people find absolutely completely monotonous. Personally, I found it hilarious, and I used to say, for instance, Secret of Mana, I must have put in, over the years since I've owned Secret of Mana being my favourite game, I must have put in over 70 hours on it, even, probably even more. And most of that time, it's just wandering around the map and hacking and slashing. So, 
and uh, just messing around with spells and see what does what and just pissing around and having a good time. Um, so, like I said, I, I think it's a subjective thing and it shouldn't be... I don't think people shouldn't make too much of a hoo-ha about it. Uh, if it's ridiculously sure, I mean, I can... Uh, my brother, for instance, was absolutely fuming with Battlefield 4. Um, he's not really into the MMO kind of thing, the, the multiplayer side of it. Battlefield is one of those games now which has evolved into a almost a pure multiplayer, only solely multiplayer experience, almost. And he, he wanted to play the mission, and he finished it un, in under five hours in one evening. And he weren't happy with that, because he did play full whack for that. So, you know, some people said the Battlefield 4 was fantastic, maybe because they're experiencing the multiplayer side of it. And of course they are. So, I think when it, when it comes to this, say for instance, the order in this case, I haven't played it. Uh, my brother's got it, he's going to be playing it very soon, so I'll be probably getting a, a, little, a little shifty at it. And uh, I think it's a high quality of game, um, and it's an enjoyable experience all through. Then um, I don't think it matters that it's six, seven hours. Really, I mean, is there a repay value there? Possibly, if there's things you have, if you have missed, there's lots of elements that go into this go into this uh, question. I think it's entirely up to the individual, and it's rather subjective. So yeah, w what do you expect when you pay full price for a game in in terms of length? Are you looking for a long game? Are you, do you feel short changed if the game is short and you've paid full whack? or whatever um, please let me know in the comments box or do whatever as the usual stuff right that aside uh, February's pickups we've been moving my hands around a lot oh I really must slow the hands down February's pickups the first thing we, we get out of the way is that guy because everyone's showing amiibos off amiibo this amiibo that so I'll just quickly do it number one Mario amiibo they are cool. I've got to admit, they are bloody cool. But I am not going for sealed boxes, as you can see. I am not going for just as a model. It can be a model, but I've used this as well, and I've started to train this up on Smash Bros. So, and my technique of opening a box here with minimal damage, a little bit, a little bit down the bottom, but minimal, <coughs> minimal burps, minimal damage. So. Finn Gamer had a um, a good method of slicing the bubble down here and here and opening it up. A really, really good method. I wish I'd have seen that after, you know, before, so not after, <laughs> before I'd opened it like that. But there you go, I'm still happy with it. Anyway, so that was my amiibo. It was too tempting not to pass up in, all, in Argos. Um, only the one. I'm not going to be a collector of them. I just thought I want one. Anyway, on to games. And many of you would have seen um, a video I did on a new game for the Amstrad CPC that I picked up during February. And that is Cyber Chicken. Ooh, yes. This came out in 2013 by um, the TMF. I've got the poster up there, as you can see. Yes. Brand new. I just wanted a brand new um, Amstrad game. I haven't had a brand new Amstrad game for many, many years. And this is rather wonderful um, it's a simple game I mean it's, it's not it's not the ground most groundbreaking of games but it's wonderfully presented the music on it is absolutely phenomenal phenomenal brand new take 64k version uh, or for 8 euros got that for 8 euros and the website for Cyber Chicken I'll, I'll leave in the description box as well because uh, it was a brilliant project um, it came out it originally was, was um, it evolved from a competition on the Amstrad CPC wiki and turned into a full release physical release with a limited run of course I think 111 uh, both uh, split half and half between disc uh, 128k and tape 64k but I have a 64k serial number 98 so well happy with a new Amstrad game and uh, I've been just scouring the charity shops, CX and eBay for several different things. And um, we've got a couple of Xbox games. We've got Blinks, the Time Sweeper, on original Xbox. Again, I always go for box instructions, as you know. This is in really good condition. In fact, there's a little story about this one, uh, which is CX, of course, two pounds. But uh, the disc 
that the guy originally gave me over the counter was scratched to hell and the instruction booklet was missing and I said well you've got another blinks on the shelf there and the, and, but the, the, the reason why I didn't pick up the one on the shelf is because it had a crack on the outside case so I said well there's another one over there can I look at the disc for that oh yeah yeah you can have a look at the disc for that the disc for that is spiffing and that one had instructions so I just took the best disc with the instructions with the best case job done two pound not bad this was a great find in a charity shop box instructions Forza Motorsport 1 lovely jubbly can't really say anything about that I did want to get the Xbox as you know for all the racing games and could just a little crease on the uh, instructions there but for a quid in the charity shop uh, spot on really spot on really really good Nick that so that was the Xbox games done five PlayStation 2 games so we have uh, for a quid again from Sue Rider charity shop destroy all humans <laughs> have no look looks like a bit like Mars attacks in game form doesn't it looks rather zany and a bit yes yeah, disintegrate humans lovely so this is a probably a tongue-in-cheek tasteless game one of those a few surface scratches on this one but instructions are really good and oh look, I've just spotted the original to see here how much did this geezer pay originally for this uh, well, he paid eight pounds for it he paid eight pounds from Granger Games this comes from your neck of the woods Kev Granger Games Newcastle Dunn Street wow there you go <laughs> funny how things can uh, come full circle didn't it so that that was originally bought by someone from Granger Games and it ended up in a charity shop in West London by slip balmy mad <laughs> so, Kev I'm going to send that to you um, also, uh, oh no, that was CEX as well. CEX. There. Also, in another charity shop, I think this was St. Luke's. Uh, as you know, I'm, a, I'm partial for a bit of a shit game. And I'm, I was surprised by how heavy the instruction manual was with Jet Ski Riders. I did like the attractive young lady on the back there. So that tempted me in to buy a heavy bloody thing. I thought, wait, yeah, is it two discs? No, it's got a, a manual the size of War and Peace. Um, with with oh and the fact that I've just snapped one of the clips off what a dullard but never mind is this good I, I, I know it is I've, yeah it's a little purple disc and it's perfect condition to me a lot of these are in really really mint condition so that's that then we got yeah back to CEX Night Rider the game now I bet this is absolute bollocks because um they normally are, unfortunately, uh, series, you know, action series tie-in games. They're normally rather bullshit. This probably is as well. Well, don't look too bad. It looks pretty PS1, to be honest, uh, from the back. Never played this. I I've seen it being played, but again, great condition. A big Knight Rider fan. Um, as I was saying to John the other day, one of the few box sets I've got, uh, DVD box sets, is the complete Knight Rider series with the films. Uh, so that sort of like uh, goes in there with it. So that's going to be quite even fun to pay two pounds for that. So uh, the condition is brilliant. Always look for good condition. This is new. This game is new, and I'm probably I'm not surprised it is new because it looks weird. Looks probably rather empty. What do you make of spin drive ping pong? Spin drive ping pong. But either way. It's, I don't think it's ever been ever, apart from the person who's very kindly written something in there. This was this is a quid. Uh, this was um, 75p from CEX. I think it was 75p. But it's brand new. Honestly, you put a seal on this, you can sell it new. It's just it's spotless, absolutely spotless. But uh, I don't know, ping pong. Ex oh, it's by explosive. Oh, treading some dirty water there, aren't we? And finally, I got this one from eBay because I was I was specifically after this um, because I felt like playing the the sort of glossier versions of the Sega Classic. So for three pounds, I think I paid for this Sega 
Classics Collection, uh, or the Sega Ages Collection, as I think it's known as in Japan, isn't it? So, yeah, I wanted this just to see how much they had ruined Virtual Racer and Outrun Space Area. Space Area looks pretty good, though, actually. Columns, um, well, can, how can you ruin Columns? There's not really much to ruin about it. Monaco GP, uh, Golden Axe, oh dear, the 3D with the 3D sprites, isn't it? So that's why I specifically went out and got that because I did want to add that into the collection to play them versions of them games. And finally, from a charity shop, which was this is a rare find, it was in a Survivor shop actually. I think I looked up on the top shelf. Hello, they're not Mega Drive games, are they? And they bloody were Mega Drive games, sports games mostly. There's three copies of FIFA, six, uh, FIFA 96, but there was one game in there which I thought I'll have that. And that's PGA Tour Golf, the original PGA Tour Golf on the Mega Drive. Two pounds, if you will, sir. Box and instructions with a clip broken. I think I've just done that. Yeah. The big cut, PGA Tour Golf. I used to play the original PGA, PGA Tour Golf on uh, PCs. It was one of the first golf. Oh, there's a clip. <laughs> eh. And I was one of the first golf games I played, along with uh, Lynx, I think Lynx 386 as well on the, P on the PC. And, uh, yeah, the Mega Drive version, do love a classic golf game. And the fact that it's in really, really good condition, £2, all of these are in really, really good prices. Really good prices. Right, quick jump cut, because just got to go and attend to the baby. <sighs> Sorry about that. Babies. They do call. Right, anyway, last couple of things to get on with. Wii U collection update. And you know I'm going for a full Wii U power collection. So the delights this month have been four. Four games. Firstly, Woodland 37 Rejoice. First for £3.75. There you go. NBA 2K13. Executive produced by Jay-Z. Not excited about that. But... It, it's needed for the collection. I haven't played a basketball game. Whew. Probably NBA Jam on the Mega Drive. That was the last. That was the last. That was the last basketball game I played. But three pounds seventy-five under four pounds and no postage as well. So mm, minty, minty, minty. Um, rubbish one. <laughs> probably one of the. I think in reviews, this is probably one of the worst games on the Wii U. But it's got to be bought, and for four pounds, it is thirty great games obstacle arcade. Yeah, the graphics do look like they're from the place that they look like they're from the sixth gen. <laughs> apparently, this is rather shite. Um, apparently, so it's a seven. It's a seven, but it's a family game. That doesn't really make much sense, does it? Family party, thirty great games, obstacle arcade. That's a, it's a, it's a, it's a name that rolls off the tongue. Four pounds anyway, and uh, I think yeah, again this is fresh out of shop. Uh, I think I broke, I did break the seal on this. Uh, I have already given it a whirl. Well, not I haven't actually. I didn't get the chance. I loaded it up and then didn't really get a chance to play it. But it was sealed, so four quid for that. As I say, four quid. I think it is. Uh, now onto the two more expensive games, which I. I Thing, uh, Injustice, gun, gu, guns, gads, gads among us, guns among us. It is in America. <laughs> Controversial. Gods among us, Injustice, from the creators of Mortal Kombat. And if you played it, it's like playing Mortal Kombat with um, DC superheroes, basically. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd pick this up. I actually tried the old Amazon Trixie thing um, when Amazon had their um, glitch, should we say, their price glitch. This was going for a penny. So I, mean, I have a couple of copies of uh, Injustice on the Wii U for a penny. Of course, they cancelled the orders. But there we go. Uh, Six pounds I got that for. So that's pretty good. Um, Good, a decent price. It normally looks about pay about a tenner for this. But six pounds for that. A couple of quid postage, so under a tenner. And finally, and this is the most um, the most expensive game of the whole pickup bunch, and that's Wii U Sports Connection. So this isn't uh, Wii, Wii Sports Club, the official Nintendo one. This is by Ubisoft. 
sports connection so it's all mo look the motion control stuff as you can see on the back these guys are having great fun one guy with the gamepad moving the goalposts literally so yeah that was seven pound fifty this was and a couple of failed attempts to buy this but again this is brand new never been used you've got the code I think in here should have yeah brand new seven pound fifty so four more Wii U games for the collection. I've got three more on the way as well. I've already two I've already purchased. So I'm just a case of waiting for them to arrive and pick up. So yeah. On the whole, a rather in terms of games at least. Oh a rather productive a rather productive uh, pickups uh, for this month. So oh, one, two, one, two, four, ten, thirteen games. There you go, a poster and a Amiibo Mario. Mm. So on that note, I've uh, stopped talking and I've got nothing else to show you anymore. So, um, not sure when the next waffle will be, to be honest. But I'm sure I'll think of something. I'm always thinking this brain is grinding to a halt half the time. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, thank you for the continued support with the Friday Foursome. It's still going strong, being absolutely brilliant. And coming up soon on a channel near you, not this one, is Home and Away Episode 2. So check that out. The trailer for it is in the description box down below. Cheers, guys. No bug. Out.